see what else we got. Oh, um, this isn't a Twitter thread. Uh, I almost wanted it to be one, but I don't think it'd play well. Uh, so I saw a rulings thread for uh, Magic the Gathering about this card, Panglacial Worm. You ever seen this card before? Um, so this, this card is shocking for a number of reasons. Uh, first off, uh, this effect doesn't work. No shot in hell should you be able to do this. But if you do do it, then you should uh, have been able to do it in 2003 before they realized what cards should and should not be allowed to do, right? Um, this was printed in like 07, right? In Cold Snap. Like it was a modern card. It says, while you're searching your library, you may play Panglacial Worm from your library. Why does this not work correctly? Well, um, like in Yu-Gi-Oh, you can only activate cards during an open game state in Magic, right? Um, they have an equivalent to the chain called the stack, but like during the resolution of a card, you can't put a new card on the stack. But what if as part of the resolution of a card, you search your library? How do you play Panglacial Worm? Well, things get tricky. And for what it's worth, uh, pretty much any interaction this card is involved in gets immediately very tricky. Uh, Siberian showed up to whine about it in uh, Gavin's server, so I had a fun afternoon. I wanted to see what people could think of in terms of shit that fucks up in Magic. Um, I said, what are some cards like Pole Position that are super innocuous but lead to these completely fucky uh, board states, right? Uh, Coder says... Um, last turn, and I said, okay, we're talking about innocuous cards here. We No one reads last turn and goes, oh, I bet that doesn't fuck up anything, right? There's people in here posting Scheherazad. We all know Scheherazad has problems, right? But here's here's a great one. Kark Clan Ironworks. Uh, this card, I believe, is now banned in Modern. Four mana artifact. Sack an artifact to add two to your mana pool. Uh, so this was the focus of a combo deck, multiple combo decks, for a significant amount of time in Modern. Um, after I left... Uh, people found out an interaction that basically caused them to have to get rid of this card. Uh, here's what happened. Um, anyone who glanced at the rules for... Oh, so here's... here's to, to understand this, you need a little preface about how casting spells works, right? So when you cast a spell, there's multiple steps. There's you, like, declare you're casting the spell, then you, then you pay the mana cost, right? You're casting the spell by the time you play the mana or pay the mana and when you pay the mana you can use mana abilities to pay for it and that includes lands but also includes effects like this which allow you to generate mana right so uh what's happening here is these two cards mirror retriever and scrap trawler were both playable in this deck let's just say right here Scrap Trawler says when in this or another artifact you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, return to your hand, target artifact card in your graveyard with a lesser mana value. And Mirror Retriever, which says when it dies, put it, an artifact card from your graveyard into your hand. Another, so it can't target itself, right? So, um, when casting a spell, you determine the cost of the spell. You decide if the spell is going to cost you mana. This is one I was unfamiliar with. And then you pay the cost. So, because um, if, if we... Use the mana ability of KCI to pay for a spell by sacrificing these two cards. That was wrong. The triggers are checked, but don't go on the stack until you finish the spell casting process, and then you can resolve them in a way that they can target each other, right? And I was like, that's insane. First of all, it gets worse. Can you do this that interaction if you are paying for a spell? That costs zero mana. Who knows? That was wrong. Many people are saying yes. The answer? No. <laughs> Rule saying you can activate uh, these abilities if there was a mana cost to pay. And the question was whether zero counted as paying. In the end, it was decided that it didn't. But for any other spell, you are still free to overactivate it for a cost you weren't going to pay with. You can, you know, Ancient Stirrings costs a green, but you could sack 45, you know, artifacts to make 45 million mana and then get the triggers. Um, this is, in, this is, I, I mean, this makes me want to never play Magic again. Let me get Siberian in here. They have been contacted. Hi. Hey. 
Okay, what's going on here? No, like I just don't want you to like uh, do this thread without supervision. Oh, I see what you. So when I fuck up, inevitably. Yeah. Okay. Like I think that uh, so far so good. I don't think you said anything that's uh, too incorrect. Um, but uh, like just in case. Yeah. Uh, these two are funny. Anime dead necromancy. They do something that's really easy to explain but really hard to template. Yeah, like uh, Necromancy in particular is uh, notable because of uh, the, the, the whole uh, substance thing. It's mm -hmm. like uh, one of uh, 13 cards in the game that uh, mention the cleanup step, which is uh, insane. Uh, and uh, Anime Dead is, of course, also Necromancy is a regular enchantment that, after resolving, it turns itself into an aura. Uh, uh, yeah, an aura. It is not. Uh, which also is crazy. I was going to say, there's a couple of them that do that, right? Um,. I maybe Dance of the Dead is another one. No, actually, maybe Dance of the Dead is a regular uh, enchantment. I'm not sure. I think it's very rare. Anyway, uh, let's see. A lot of people saying Spell Sky. That yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. But I yeah, would look Sky at this card and I would think, because, oh no, this is uh, crazy. Uh, Spell Sky is interesting because there are uh, some weird. There's some weird stuff in the rules for changing targets. Uh, like some strange ambiguity that uh, wasn't never resolved. Like there are two different rules that are saying the same thing, and we are not sure where the difference is. So like we just uh, carry carry on. Okay, so this is this person kept showing up. Uh, Selvala, uh, Explorer returned. Um, yeah. Th this belongs to a class of cards uh, that has what I referenced earlier, which is mana abilities which can be used while paying for a uh, the cost for a card, but also do something else. Uh, so basically it ends up being this weird, unrespondable thing that maybe causes other things to happen. You can think of it like the damage step, but like 10,000 times worse. Yes, but Selvala is the worst one of them all because it produces... Uh, uh, an amount of mana that's not predictable. You can't know how much mana Selvala produces up until up like uh, up until uh, uh, you've actually resolved the ability. Which means that this creates so many problems because uh, you can do it while you're casting a spell, and uh, at that point uh, you can randomly discover that you don't have enough resources to finish casting that spell, <laughs> but uh, you can't undo the ability. Because it costs a card to change zone, so good luck with that. <laughs> and uh, it gets uh, obviously like it gets uh, really bad with uh, Panglacial Worm. I don't I don't even need to mention that. Yeah, you, for, like, for any the of these for any of these mana abilities that could potentially Panglacial Worm Silvala. Yeah, for for any of these mana abilities that could potentially cause Plan Panglacial Worm to meet the condition necessary to cast it or put it into play or whatever. Um, you can just imagine a scenario where they also find Pan Glacial Worm and it becomes 10,000 times worse. It's like, this okay, card this is, is awful, idea, okay? but... Okay. Consider this. Yeah. You are uh, uh, searching your library. While you're searching your library, you can shuffle it, okay? So imagine that Pan Glacial Worm is the top card of your library while you're doing this. Now, you can... Choose to try casting Pan Glacial Worm. Maybe you don't have enough mana, but Selvala is on board, so you can try. So you move it on the stack. Then you activate Selvala. You draw the second card of your library, the one that was under Pan Glacial Worm. And then you discover that you couldn't make enough mana. So you undo the Pan Glacial Worm casting. You put it back on top of your library, but you already drew the second that card of your long. library. Which is a disaster. If this happens, <laughs> I'm DQing you. I have the authority to DQ you if this happens. This is not a joke. This is actually uh, arguably cheating. Um, I will say, Siberian showed up in this thread, and they they posted. They were like, "Okay, just so you know, Pan Glacial Worm is one, not close. It's the worst." <clears throat> oh, yeah, I took uh, a I lot of these. Cards Thankfully, they don't print cards like this anymore for the most part, but um. The cards that overwrite cards as abilities to like what they are, they become yep. one ones, they lose all their abilities, shit like that. All of these are a problem.
Uh, not for any really difficult reason. It just requires you to know about layers, which you don't really have to know about otherwise. Yeah. Um, th th this card's just evil. Uh, this is one of those cards that's not innocuous, so we'll skip it. Like, you read this and you know something bad is going to happen. Um... <clears throat> keep scrolling a lot of her oh the snake is interesting actually uh, the snake says what it's you have to pay it before your upkeep yeah like uh, basically it's like uh, you know how you can just play a land during your turn yeah yeah like it's a, a special action like there is a, a series of uh, like actions you can take during the game called the special actions like uh, suspending a card playing a land and um, I'm drawing blanks, but one of them is uh, that certain cards say that you have to pay a cost before something happens, and that counts as a special action. So you can do it at any point you have priority before the, the threshold. That's really funny. <clears throat> does, yeah. it, does it use okay. the stack? No, it's not an activated ability. Awesome. Like It looks like an activated <laughs> ability. It's not an activated ability. I just assumed that it was. Um, yeah. Uh, th this asshole came up a lot. Uh, Volrath. Uh, again, another car any card that becomes a copy of a card, except it retains an ability, has a lot of really fucking terrible implications. Um, this is normal. Um, let me see if I can. There's a bunch of copies. The stream oh. is frozen, so you can't see what you're seeing right now. Uh, Lion's Eye Diamond. Lion's Eye Diamond is the worst I card ever printed. Lion's Eye Diamond. Well, it, the, the best part about Lion's Eye Diamond is that it does not do what it says on the tin. It just doesn't yep. do it. <laughs> it's uh, uh, activate only as an instant. It's a really nice line of text that Selvala should have. Every issue with Selvala would be solved if you had uh, activate only as an instant. Uh, so but they refuse to do it for reasons that I do not understand. Matt Tabak, every two months or so, comes back to the issue and says, yeah, we should do it, but you know. Eh. Cool. <laughs> uh, Blood Moon, of course, is, it, yep. ag again, one of those cards that overwrites the fundamental principles of another card. It becomes a fucking disaster. Um, Warp World, don't, we, no. Clear broken card. Clear, ridiculous, unusable card. Many triggers. Um, let me see if I can... Oh, this was a fun interaction that people kept bringing up. Uh, Ixalan's Binding and Squee. Yes. Uh, it's been uh, removed. It used to be broken. Now it's normal. But when it was broken, it was really funny. Also, go back to Hinata. Hinata is you want to interesting. Talk about Hinata? <laughs> yeah, I figured you would want to talk about this one. Hinata is very interesting because of certain spells where you do not decide the targets. There are certain X spells where you decide certain targets and your opponent decides the other targets. So your opponent is going to decide how much the spell costs. Which gets interesting with stuff like, uh, uh, like it's the same uh, uh, problem with uh, Svala. You don't know how much the spell costs up until you are halfway through casting it. Cool. And this created so much controversy. There were people that were really convinced that you could, like, you cast the spell, don't have enough mana. Uh, like, you cast the spell, the opponent chooses targets, you don't have enough mana to cast it, so you undo the casting process. That's fine. Those people were convinced that you could just keep casting the spell to just keep your opponent hostage until they decided the targets that you want. No! That's not the case. That... That's not the case. You cannot do that. That is so fucking funny. That's that's hilarious. It's legitimately the play pot of extravagance for my win con. You've created an irreparable game state style shit. Yeah. Awful, awful, awful. Uh, oh, we don't need to talk about Pithing Needle. Pithing Needle, Schmithing Needle. Oh, Boba Rigmos. They fixed this, by the way. Thank God. Uh, yeah. Uh, this card, we... yeah, this card's innocuous, but, uh, is a disaster. Um, like ones mentioned earlier, it has a mana ability that draws a card. So, you know. 
they fit this with uh, ultimate a different card. The chromatic star is uh, better. So, uh, but yeah, if you wanted to create problems, you play chromatic sphere. Oh, how does this interact with pan glacial? No, I'm not gonna. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to kill you. By the way, um, there is uh, Archimage Ascension, which is a card that says uh, that yep. you should get it fully leveled up. In, you can replace a draw with uh, a search, so you can uh, search your library, cast, try casting Pan Glacial World, activate Chromatic Sphere, replace the draw with another search, and cast another Pan Glacial Worm. So you are casting Pan Glacial Worm while you are casting Pan Glacial Worm while you are searching your library. I love Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, this Me is, too. Here is yours. Uh, you have Volroth yeah. Shapeshifter. This as long as, first of disaster. all, this card is clearly a problem already. As yeah. long as the top card of your graveyard is a creature card, first off, cards that care about the order of your graveyard. Yeah. Volroth Shapeshifter the has the full text of that card <laughs> and has the text to discard a card. Cool. No. The, there is a lot going on here. First off, it's not a copy effect, it's that it's a text changing effect. Those happen in different layers. This is very important. The the reason why this is, this works like this is very complicated. I hate this card. Second, it's a static text changing effect. Like uh, if there are text changing or copying effect, they like uh, they don't change like this. There is they nothing activate, that causes right? a card to change dynamically like this. This is a catastrophe. And uh, I posted some interactions in the gaming Discord. They are uh, <laughs> uh, atrocious. They are uh, really bad. And the worst part about this card is that it's potentially playable. Oh, the worm no. is a meme. This can do something. It's a, it's a very niche, but it can do stuff. And every time, I used to spend a lot of time in judge chat answering questions. and. Uh, once in a while, some competitive EDH player would come asking some questions about uh, World Shapeshifter, and I would always be like, please, please don't tell me people are remembering that uh, this is a thing. Please let it be forgotten. <laughs> uh, opposition Agent. This card's pretty clearly broken. Uh, you control yeah. your opponents while they're searching their libraries. Yeah, I'm sure that that will resolve in the most exciting way possible. I don't remember the full details on why this card is... Uh broken but it was definitely undercooked like uh, uh, the section in the library that govern they are in the competitive rulebook that uh, says how this card works uh, is clearly incomplete it's not uh, 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 like there is some stuff missing that we we're just trying to guess how it works but uh, like uh, this uh, was printed while they were changing roots managers so like that was a problem and they never went back to visit so yeah. this uh, kind of a Chad, for those of you who don't know, there are a number of cards of that you control an opponent. Um, the most famous of them is probably Mind Slaver, although I guess now it could be new M Rock Cool. Um, but I think it's still Mind Slaver. My favorite thing that you could do with Mind Slaver was check the sideboard, and they took that out. <laughs> that was, that yeah. was so cool. It was take your opponent's next turn for them, and then you would do it, and you'd be like, I'll check the board. <laughs> People would scoop to that. They would be like, no, you're not seeing that shit. Um... They changed it though. Air ties meddling. This card um was wrong. causes another card to resolve. Uh, it's uh, uh, madness. This card is insane. This card should not exist. This is uh, the only card uh, that can put a card on the stack uh, without casting it. And uh, <laughs> like uh, you can uh, uh, like I don't need to explain why this card why this card is a mistake. You can like open the scribal page for air ties meddling and read the rulings and you will understand right away that this should not be. This is, there should not be a card that works like this. Uh we've got Trinosphere. This one obviously a disaster. Um yeah. any spell that would cost less than three costs three. I mean good luck, right? Uh it has this <laughs> it's uh, like uh, while we were talking about uh, the steps of casting a spell. In the steps of casting a spell, there is the Trinisphere step. Just personal, the personal Trinisphere, tri, yeah, Trinisphere step. <laughs> cool. That no, no other card works like that. Uh, we've got Skullbriar. Um, I... Counters remain on Skullbriar as it moves to a zone other than a player's hand or library. Very cool. It's 
Great. Although, now that we have stickers, I guess it's less special. Like, before stickers, obviously, it was like, uh, oh, Jesus Christ, it's called Briar. Now, people are learning more about how this kind of stuff works. So, uh, it's, um, it's still uh, insane. It yeah. still uh, should not be. Especially, it should not have been in, 20, in 2012. Yeah, this is, by the way, chat, this, this card is older than all of you. But uh, uh, now it's uh, more fine. Uh, Goblin Test Pilot, when this card came out, um, I remember it fondly, uh, at random was not something you put on cards. Yeah. Well, we were just like, like this the... got printed and we were like, how how the fuck do we resolve this? And we rolled some D20s. Like, uh, the, you know how to fix this card, how to make this a, a normal card? Yeah. Remove the word target. If this card didn't target, it would be fine. It would oh. be perfectly fine. The fact that it targets creates so many complications. I see. So, because sometimes there are cards that make targeting certain cards more expensive. Uh, like uh, there is I a Merfolk that says uh, Merfolk cost uh, two more to activate to target. If your opponent controls that, can you even activate Goblin Test Pilot if you are tapped out? Because uh, potentially there is uh, an illegal target, <laughs> and you are not gonna. You're not going to know that it's illegal until, again, until you are almost to the end of the spell, spell uh, well, of the ability activating process. So you have to undo the ability. So essentially, it removes the at random restriction since you can do it uh, however many times you like to hit the target, the target that you want. It's really funny to consider that, like, I would hope that you just get a, a warning when you hit an illegal target. You just be like, hey. Well, uh, if. Uh, uh, like uh, there is a you know suppression field. Suppression field says the all activated ability cost two more to cast. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a similar exploit to the goblin since you activate the goblin, you select the target. Uh, if it's not the target that you like, you could say, oh well, I'm not tapping mana. Then the activation is illegal, and then you undo. You can't do that. That's cheating. Yeah, that that but literally sounds opponent, like cheating. Uh, yeah, but if you with the merfolk thing, uh, it's uh, more of a gray line because. Uh, you can activate the goblin, and there are many valid targets, but some targets are not going to be valid, and you won't know until you are, again, to the end of the casting of the activating process. So I have, I actually have no idea how to handle that, and the many judges I've talked to would just rather not think about that situation. <laughs> uh, her again, her again. Um, I mean, uh, we, we said enough. Burning of Zinye, uh, I did not know this. Um, hey. <laughs> You are not even allowed to pick indestructible lands. Yeah. Sure. Um, Quicksilver Elemental. Gains all activated abilities of target creature until end of turn. Cool. <laughs> you know, it can uh, target itself uh, to gain uh, two instances of its own abilities. Awesome. So, like, uh, if there is an, uh, a once per turn ability, you can uh, gain that ability. Then it targets itself uh, and have two instances of that ability. Then targets itself again uh, and have four instances of that ability, and so on and so on. Wait. <laughs> okay. Is it possible with infinite mana to just gain everyone's ability by giving it itself enough instances to just steal them? Sure. Like so a, this is uh, just this well, is every If you could ever. put every card in the game on the field, you could have every ability in the in the game. I guess. All right. So this is just a, a walking nightmare. Then it's just yeah. Also, like this was uh, even worse before they figured out uh, uh, linked abilities, uh, because sometimes there are certain abilities that certain abilities that refer to one another, so they are linked. And uh, uh, now stealing them doesn't work as well because uh, like you can steal an ability, but you don't have the other ability that uh, it needs to work, so it doesn't do anything. It, it hasn't always worked like this. So there was a time before that uh, rule change where it was really fucked up. Equinox doesn't work. Yeah, this... this. How... It... This strikes uh, me as, as something that just legitimately can't happen. Because in Yu-Gi-Oh, this is a normal effect. Like Stardust, the DOS thing, does uh, this, for example. Mm -hmm. But Stardust also has... Uh, a lot of really strange rulings that don't often come up, but are a, a real headache when they do come up, that Equinox should have, but were never codified. Uh, so Equinox is uh, a card that uh, uh, has the very dubious honor 
of not being covered whatsoever by the rule book. If you read the rule book, you will not know how to handle this card. Uh, it Blood was Moon. just forgotten. It was left behind. Uh, and then uh, the one that I wanted to bring up was Season of the Witch. Um, I thought this was a normal card. I was like, okay, all untapped creatures that could have attacked but did not are destroyed. I'm like, okay, that this seems pretty normal. Um, and then you showed me Silent Arbiter, and I went, oh, yeah. So yeah. I, I guess the argument is mean, uh, any monster could, could have attacked. been the one. Yeah. Like, uh, you control two creatures, you attack with one. Okay. The other one, could it have attacked? Like, uh, after you the have had to pick the attacks, it. <laughs> it uh, at the start, it was a valid option. But after choosing attacks, uh, no, it wasn't. The only attack that happened was, uh, the like, uh, with the creatures that attacked, the other creatures could have attacked. And it gets uh, even worse uh, with stuff like uh, um, Ghostly Prison. Because like if you put a cost on the attack, but you can pay the cost, could the creature have attacked? It's not clear. We don't understand. And uh, uh, I refuse to rule on this card. If people ask me questions about this card, I just refuse. I like with uh, with most other things. Even if I don't know, I can. Uh, I probably am. I have enough familiarity with the rules of the game that I could take a stab in the dark. Season of the Witch. It's a mystery, and it's a mystery that's been going on for 28 years. I've seen old, really old forum posts from 1995 asking the same questions that we are asking today. <laughs> it, it, is a, it is an argument that precedes you, and God willing, it will live on after our deaths. Yeah. Uh, I hope that future... Uh, planeswalkers can ask these questions of of each other thank you for jumping on for this this was fun <laughs> uh, it's a pleasure thanks peace oh what a nice young person uh but you know i i just wanted to say i want to let's conclude this um little segment i guess um with let me see if i can find my favorite response to this um <clears throat> I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Where the fuck is it? I'm, I literally am on Twitter for too long. Yeah. I think magic has too much rules infrastructure, FAQs, ruling sections on gatherer, comprehensive rules for there to be anything really that janky or in need of analysis. Like there is with pole position or other problem children in Yu-Gi-Oh. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying when I say while you will encounter ruling issues in Yu-Gi-Oh infinitely more frequently than magic, the scope of which the scope by which Magic the Gathering's cards are fundamentally broken exceeds Yu-Gi-Oh's by a factor of a hundred. The, these people <laughs> they will put anything in Black Border. Oh boy. 